Let us now see the uses of microbes in sewage treatment. What exactly we mean by sewage? Sewage is human excreta mainly. But when this human excreta play, flows through the drain or drainage and everything, it carries mud, pebbles, some people add cloth, some people add paper. You know, there are so many things which get, get added into it. In sewage treatment, this complete sewage needs to be treated so that the water can be put back into the water bodies. If this sewage is directly poured into the water body, suppose the sewage from any city or a town is directly poured into a river, what will happen? In the river, organic matter will increase. Sewage is an organic matter and this organic matter becomes food for microbes. So as this organic matter increases in the water body, what will happen? This will result in increase in number of microbes. And these microbes, because they need this food, they will break this down. And to break this down, they would need oxygen. So their biological oxygen demand, that is BOD, increases. They will start taking oxygen from the water. So whatever oxygen is dissolved in the water will be used up by these microbes because their number is increasing in a very, very fast manner. And if that dissolved oxygen is taken mainly by them, then less oxygen will be available to other aquatic organisms. So this will result in decrease in dissolved oxygen. If oxygen becomes less, the other aquatic organisms will die. The dead bodies will act as organic matter. That means again this cycle is going to continue. So what is this BOD? Biological oxygen demand. It is the amount of oxygen required by microbes to completely break down organic matter in, in one liter of water at 20 degrees Celsius in 5 days. These are the three important parameters which we need to remember whenever we are talking about the definition of BOD. So BOD full form is biological oxygen demand, very simple oxygen required by these microbes to break down. But these numbers are very important. In one liter of water at 20 degrees Celsius in five days, then you will call it BOD. If BOD is less than one ppm, then that water is considered as fit for consumption. If it is more than this, that means the water is polluted with organic matter. And how do you know it is polluted with sewage? You can find E. coli. If you detect E. coli in water, then you can conclude that it is polluted with sewage. Because E. coli is present in our elementary canal and it gets eliminated along with fecal matter. So now how do we treat this sewage? The sewage treatment is done in three steps or sometimes it is stopped after two steps. So the first is known as primary treatment. All that sewage which is collected from the town or the city is sent into a sewage treatment plant and it reaches a huge tank which is called the primary treatment tank. There are two things which are done here. One is filtration and second is sedimentation. Filtration and sedimentation. 
So because of this filtration, the insoluble cloth, paper and all those things can be removed. By sedimentation, the mud, the pebbles, stone pieces, everything can be removed. And now it is sent to the secondary treatment. Secondary treatment is also known as biological treatment. And as soon as we use the word biological, that means we are talking about microbes here. So in biological treatment, microbes are used. There are some special type of microbes and they are used in the form of flocks. So this liquid which is coming from here, it has organic matter. It has the fecal matter in it. The cloth, paper, plastic, stones, mud, everything has been removed. So in this liquid or effluent which is coming here, it has to be treated in two ways. One, it should be aerated. The reason for aeration is because the bacteria are aerobic bacteria. They are going to break down the organic matter in presence of oxygen. And that is why this aeration is very, very important. We add flocks into it. Flocks are added. What exactly is this flock? Flocks. So flocks are added. Flocks are nothing but clusters of bacteria plus fungi. And the bacteria which are used are normally coliform, pseudomonas and clostridium. And their aggregation with the fungus. These are known as flocks. These flocks, that means the fungi and the bacteria, microbes, will break down that fecal matter, organic matter, completely. But they require oxygen because this is an aerobic breakdown. Now, in the secondary tank or in the biological treatment tank, when these bacteria are acting, what happens? Certain things they settle down. And this substance which is settled down is known as the secondary sludge or it is also known as activated sludge. Secondary sludge because it is obtained as a result of secondary treatment and activated sludge because it has microbes in it. So what do we do with this activated sludge? It is divided into two parts. A small portion will be used as flocks again, as inoculum in the freshly coming uh, fluid, liquid from the primary tank. And the bigger part is used to make biogas. Biogas is again with the help of microbes and the microbes here are anaerobic microbes. They convert all this activated sludge which has bacteria and fungi and everything into biogas. The composition of this biogas is methane mainly. About 50 to 70 percent is methane. Little bit of carbon dioxide and H2S. These are the constituents of this biogas. And now this liquid, this liquid which is obtained after secondary treatment is without organic matter. You can just dump it in the river. If you dump this in river, there is no organic matter added into the, liver, uh, into the river. But this is not fit for consumption. You cannot drink this water. If you want to drink this water, it has to go through tertiary treatment. So in tertiary treatment, extra salts are removed. 
chlorination is done and after this then the water is fit for consumption we say it is potable potable means now this water can be consumed you can drink this water so here organic matter is gone and we have converted this into something which can be easily thrown into water and activated sludge has also been used to generate biogas plus little bit of activated sludge will be added into the new fluid which is coming from the primary tank so you don't have to bring flocks every time you have to just circulate it there so in many a times after secondary treatment the water is thrown into the rivers tertiary treatment is done only if the water is to be consumed it basically removes extra salt this water which is coming from the secondary treatment plant has more salts but that's fine if you using it for you know irrigation purpose that's fine those salts will go into the soil and will be used by the plant 